Hello everybody, this is Danilo Cuellar from PeacefulAnarchism.com out here in the beautiful nature once again with you all. Today I want to share a conversation I had with a friend recently and uh, she was mentioning how in Italy it's so wonderful because life is slower and they appreciate things more and for example all of the businesses close for one to two hours midday to allow for the afternoon nap and how wonderful that was because it just showed how much slower life goes in Italy and my first question or response to that observation was are those businesses voluntarily closing their doors midday due to culture due to you know what other businesses are doing do you know societal pressures or are they doing so as a result of legislation and edict because there's a very fundamental difference between the two between voluntary interaction and coercion it is the difference between charity and a mugging If it is done of their own volition as a result of cultural evolution, that this is just the way that things are run in Italy and perhaps other countries in Europe, then I have no problem with that. That's a beautiful thing. It's a wondrous thing. If, however, that is a result of state legislation and mandates, then I have a big problem with that. Well, number one, why would any business that truly wants to serve the public and make a profit and therefore thrive, why would they want to close their doors? Now, perhaps it, it may be a cultural difference, but if the businesses are, are closing due to legal coercion and law, then this would necessarily injure those businesses and their ability to thrive and serve the public. This would injure the economy. This would hinder the possibility for progress to be achieved. So it's very important that when we engage in these conversations with people, when we tell people that we are anarchists and voluntarists, that they do not associate the state with culture. Culture is something that has developed organically over many years, decades, and centuries of evolution, of cultural evolution. Things like food, ethnic food, language, customs, dancing, clothing. These are not handed down by bureaucrats and political masters. These form organically, spontaneously over time. They're influenced by many factors, of course, but not by mandates and edicts not by coercion, not by threats of violence. No, that would be the state. Whenever there is the beginning of coercion or one group attempting to aggress and dominate another group, this is the genesis of the state 
in any society, and it must be resisted. Any desire for one group of people to claim the moral right to rule another group of people is the state. The state is the parasitical entity that attaches itself to the host, to the industrious, productive host. And it slowly siphons away productivity from that host. Therefore, we can say that the state is a lagging indicator of culture. The state does not precede culture. The state follows culture. The state is the person who jumps in front of the parade and claims credit for the parade. The state is... The time during the Industrial Revolution, when the factories were just being built, when people were migrating from the farms to factories to work, to earn a living, to increase their wealth much more than they could have living on a farm, and child labor and safety in the workplace improved not because of state law, but because of simple improvements in production and manufacturing, technological advancements. And only after that has occurred does the state come along with its child labor laws, with OSHA regulations, and claim that this is the reason why the workplace is safer, because of state law. No. It's not. The state is a lagging indicator of culture. It is only after people's income and earnings have increased due to advances in technology and improvements in productivity and people can earn more and they can buy more with the currency that they make, that they earn, only then does the state come in with its minimum wage laws its price floors, its wage floors, and say it is only because of the minimum wage that people are earning more money. No, it's not. It doesn't matter how many threats of violence or coercion you can enact on a person, it will not make them more productive. Only creativity, imagination, and freedom makes people more productive. You cannot put a, a gun to a man's head and say, create. No, it doesn't work like that. That's how you stunt growth. That's how you annihilate the imagination. The state is a lagging indicator of culture. If anarchists say we are against the state, it only means we are against threats of violence and coercion. It means that there is a way that humanity can live absent this monstrosity. The host does not need the parasite. The parasite needs the host. That is a point that must be made abundantly clear. We must gain a new perspective into this idea of culture and the state. Dispel the myth that the state is necessary. If you say the state is necessary, you are saying violence and coercion and aggression is necessary for survival. And that is barbaric. For the rest of us, we thrive in voluntary, peaceful, interaction between consenting individuals. Thank you very much for listening. This is Daniil Cuellar from PeacefulAnarchism.com. Enjoy the beautiful nature.